I'm John Sherva, Deputy Sports Editor here at the Los Angeles Times, and I'm joined by our columnist Bill Plaschke to talk about the latest coach in town, Byron Scott. Bill, is this a good move for the Lakers? I think it's a necessary move. Is it a good move? It's probably the only move they could make at this point. This is a team that's in complete disarray. What's the one thing they want their fans to think about? They, ha they have no chance of winning in the next couple of years. They have Kobe Bryant to an onerous $48 million contract for the next two years. They can't get free agents. They can't, you know, again, they're not going to win. They're not going to win a championship. So what can they do to remind people they're still the Lakers? Bring back an old Laker. Bring back a Showtime guy. Bring back a guy who they will at least, when he takes the floor at Staples Center in, in, in November, fans won't be chanting, we won Phil, we won Phil. Fans won't be booing him. Fans will at least embrace him and endure him. That's what they need. They need a guy at his press conference today. All the old Lakers showed up. Magic Kareem those got. They need that kind of guy to tell people, you know what, we're still the Lakers. The problem is, on the floor, they're not anywhere close to being what the Lakers used to be. But they're hoping that B. Scott can sort of bring back that aura, bring back that toughness, bring back even, I dare I say, that, that sort of showtime. I mean, I don't think it's that's possible. But he's the best guy to get. They couldn't really get anybody else that would any great coach is going to want to come take over this mess right now. So you're saying basically that he's a placeholder until after the Kobe's gone? Yeah, I think he's a great – he was there for the start of Kobe's career. In fact, I've talked to him. I remember talking to both of them in the Laker locker room in 1996. That's how old I am. That's how old they are. Uh, he was there when Kobe started. He played for the Lakers. That was the end of his career. Now he's the perfect guy to usher Kobe out the door. And I think that's what he is. He's a placeholder. He's an usher. He's a curator. For a couple of years, he'll be with Kobe – to kind of make sure that Kobe's the end of his career, Kobe doesn't try to do too much, doesn't try to, you know, doesn't embarrass himself, doesn't try to run the team. He pr pretty much kind of smooth that transition. And then, if they have some success, I can see him sticking around for the next generation of Lakers, maybe. Or if he doesn't, at least he'll be the kind of guy that came in and kind of did the job, sort of like, you know, sort of like a, a Joe Torre with the Dodgers when he came into the Dodgers, just to keep things calm for a couple of years until the next wave comes in. Now he was uh, did take the, the New Jersey Nets to the NBA Finals for two years. So that he, was a long, long <laughs> time ago, John. And he's since had he's got a losing record as a coach. He had trouble. He, he of course he he had trouble in New Orleans. He took New Orleans to the playoffs a couple of years, but he's had some trouble with players there. In and of course is his the last place he was at. Cleveland, no fair, no problem, and it wasn't his fault. He took over right before LeBron James skipped town, so they won like 19 games. So he's had trouble since, you know, New Jersey, the finals, that was great. He said really hasn't had a ton of success since then. Great guy. Everybody loves him. Great guy. Hard-nosed guy. It's his dream job, so you know he's really going to be focused on it. This will be his main thing. He will, he'll be, he's not unlike Mike Brown or Mike D'Antoni. I mean, he's really tied to the Lakers through blood. And so I think that they, you know that they're counting on that to make him really focused. Do you know what kind of uh, scheme he's going to run, or 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 what he's sort of known for as a as a coach? Well, he's known for defense, and he's going he's already said they will play defense. The scheme he'll run will be, hey, Kobe, what do you want to do? Okay, do that. <laughs> that that's going to be as is every coach's scheme that they've run since before Phil Jackson. Okay, so you know it, it, it's since Phil, so he'll pretty much Kobe will do the offense, but B Scott will do it. And it's important to note. I don't think he's hired this yet. It's important to look at who his top assistant is because he needs a very, very strong number one for that scheme because he's not really known as an offensive guy and just for to support him to kind of prop, keep him propped up. So look and see who his number one guy is. He needs a very, very strong number one. Now, he does have a decent relationship with Kobe. Oh, he and Kobe are very close. They're, again, he was Kobe's mentor coming in, so how it is going out. But Kobe's famous for... You're his friend one day, and if something happens, you know he has falling outs with a lot of people. So here's hoping they can keep that together. And Kobe understands. I mean, they need somebody to make the tough decisions on Kobe. They need somebody to say, Kobe, you know, you're know, you not going to play 38 minutes a game. You're going to play 28 minutes a game. Kobe, you're going to come out for the third quarter. You know, Kobe, you're going to rest that injury for three days. You know, They're going to need somebody to tell him that. You know, And this is a guy to tell him that. This is a guy to, you know, to, really, to, to let him know who's in, who's in charge. Okay, let's make you the general manager for a, for a minute. Would you have hired him or Derek Fisher? Oh, you had to hire B. Scott. Derek Fisher, remember, they traded away Derek Fisher in the middle of a championship run several years ago. They did this because Derek was unhappy, not playing very much, and they worried he would be an unsettling figure in the locker room. So you cannot, as much as I love D. Fish, as much as the Laker fans love D. Fish, the Lakers saw that he wasn't exactly the sort of strong locker room presence that they would need. So they were smart to not bring him back. Plus, he had played too recently with Kobe. Kobe couldn't really 
He loves defense like we all do. Colby wouldn't have re- respected him and played hard for him because they were too close together, too much, they're too much contemporaries. Uh, so no, no, there's no way. And defense went to the right place with Phil. That's going to be fun in New York. This, this is the right thing for here. Any expectations of making the playoffs, even as an eighth seed? Zero. I mean, I don't think. I think they're they're a, you know a 40 win team maybe. And that's what I'm seeing. If they make the playoffs, it'll be a huge. It'll be a number one story. Kobe revival. Number two. Brian Scott revival, Byron Scott revival would be, you know, two huge revival stories if they make the playoffs, you know. And again, uh, you know, Julius Randle, they have a good young player, but they, but they got guys like Jeremy Lin and Carlos Boozer, who are they'd have been great four or five years ago. They're, 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 there's no Lin Sanity happening here. There's no Utah Jazz greatness happening here. This is the new Lakers, and it's a temporary sort of a makeshift Lakers. And it's a no expectations Lakers. Okay, and the fans of Los Angeles. Are they going to be more interested in a a uh, non-playoff Laker team or a Clipper team that's coming off one of the most tumultuous seasons ever? This will surprise you and it surprises me as well. You know, the Clippers are still number two in town by a long shot. The Lakers have 16 championships. Clippers have none. The Laker fans, the only thing they love to do more than cheer for the Lakers is to boo the Clippers, and they don't like the Clipper fans. I don't understand this. Why don't they at least respect the Clippers and their fans? They don't. So, no, I think the Laker fans will still be all Lakers-centric. Clipper fans, it's a very, very divide, distinct divide, you know, and it's a very distinct divide. They aren't going to go across, come to go down that hallway to change teams. I think the fans stay with who they are. The Lakers still, the Lakers now, have they lost the number one thing in town to the Dodgers? I thought they did until the Dodgers had the big TV screw-up. So the Lakers and Dodgers are still 1-1A one one in town, and the Clippers are still, you know, clear, probably still number three behind USC football. Okay. Well, thanks for all the insight, Bill. Bill Plaschke, our columnist here at the Los Angeles Times. For more on this story and uh, other sports news, please go to latimes.com sports.